Attorney Winfried Hempel wants justice for former residents of the ethnic German Colonia Dignidad in Chile. Founded by Paul Schaefer in 1961, the community was based on Nazi and fundamentalist Christian ideals. Torture, sexual abuse and even murder were committed here with impunity for some four decades. Hempel himself was born and raised here. Now he's fighting for compensation for the victims and suing the Chilean and German governments. It's an ongoing battle. Winfried Hempel is heading up to the former Colonia Dignidad, where, for 20 years, he was subjected to beatings, hard labor, and psychological cruelty. It's not a place I like to go back to. To me, it's like a workplace I hated. I try not to stay more than two or three days at a time. It's hard to be there. It's an emotional strain. The road to the colony is still closed to the public. Since 2005, it's been known as the Via Baviera, or Bavarian village. Only about 70 colonos, as the residents call themselves, remain, unwilling to leave the place where so many were manipulated, beaten and drugged. As hard as it is for him, Hempel has been coming back to visit for about three years now. He collects evidence, statements and new clients. He takes two of his clients through Paul Schaefer's house. The ex-leader died in 2010. In the evenings, Schaefer would preach abstinence and then proceed to molest underage boys. Even now, few residents are willing to talk about it. Harald Lindemann had to overcome deep feelings of shame. Paul Schaefer's bedroom was here, behind this door. And every night, another boy would have to stay with him. No, the memories are not nice. I don't want to say anything more about it. The memories are painful and generally repressed. The residents would rather look forward than back. They've opened the colony to tourism, offering German folklore and German beer as attractions. It may seem grotesque, but they say life has to go on. And after all, Schaefer is dead and buried. But Winfried Hempel has been digging up the past. His father still lives here in a basement apartment. When father and son talk, they steer clear of sensitive topics. Papa? Papa? Oh, there you are. Look what we've brought you. How are you? <laughs> You're spoiling me. <laughs> we've come armed. Like all the colony's children, Hempel grew up separated from his parents and siblings. At age 20, he left the colony, went back to school and became an attorney. His 33rd birthday was the first he ever celebrated with his parents. We always had to take photos like these almost secretly so no one would find out, because it was frowned on for parents and children to be together at all. There are some photos, but it was always a huge effort to take them. Making them all the more precious. Oh, this photo is worth its weight in gold to me. <clears throat> <laughs> Over a beer, Winfried Hempel cautiously broaches subjects that people here don't like to talk about as they're still painful, such as the forced separation of children from their mothers. I was just four, and she wasn't allowed contact with us anymore. She was torn away from us completely. We were totally at Schaefer's mercy, totally. And he called for us at night, our great father. What a scumbag. 
Let the little children come to me. That's God's word. But when I learned how it was misused, what could I do? I can't put it into words. I cried my heart out. I had no idea Schaefer was doing things like that. He was always very careful to make sure the parents found out as little as possible about what he was doing. That much is clear. Winfried Hempel doesn't confront his father, at least not this time. He's never been able to persuade him to join the class action suit. You can't speak freely about the topic. You can only touch upon the subject, but you can't bring it all out into the open because for my parents, that would mean tossing their entire lives, not just their past, but their entire lives in the trash. My father's 75 now. Hempel has been preparing his class action suit for three years now. Many colony residents see him as a troublemaker. He constantly has to justify what he's doing. We didn't do that at all. We didn't take cameras into any homes where anyone might feel hassled, not at all. I was in a public space filming, but that's all that any tourists would do. I'm allowed to, aren't I? Calm down then. I've got more respect for people than I'm often given credit for here. Okay, Thomas. Goodbye. The director just now called me because we're supposedly harassing people in their homes, which is totally far-fetched. They're just bothered because I'm here. And they're probably upset that we're showing the truth from an inside perspective. And they don't want it presented to the outside world that way. In 2013, Harald Lindemann realized he had to get away from this place. Now he lives in southern Chile and has joined Winfried Hempel's effort. The colony residents see him as a traitor. Most of us here were sincerely looking for guidance from the Bible and trying to dedicate ourselves to God and his teachings. And they say we turned away from God and his teachings the way we lived here for 40 years. Harald Lindemann is talking about his past for the first time on camera. It's hard. The rule has always been never to speak in public about the abuse, beatings and torture. Most of the residents are old now and they avoid contact with reporters. Many younger residents are more open. Some have left the colony and are willing to confront the past, but others have trouble overcoming the years of brainwashing. You could go door to door and try to speak to the victims. But in the religious sense, they feel like they're being damned, so you can't approach them. You can't get through to the victims because they see you as a black angel come to take them to hell. That's the problem. Augusto Pinochet's military dictatorship used the colony to incarcerate and torture dissidents. Chile and Germany both long turned a blind eye and have been slow to accept any responsibility. We actually had a double legal system in force, the German and the Chilean. It could have provided double legal protection, but both systems failed. Now, Hempel intends to hold them to account. He's heading back to Santiago. There he meets with Efrain Feder, another of Colonia Dignidad's victims. He's joining the suit for compensation from the Chilean and German states. They discuss the case in Feder's office. A central exhibit is a document that made the underage Feder's illegal adoption official. My father allegedly signed the document, even though he was already dead at the time. The document says my father gave me up for adoption, but he wasn't even still living. Here's the adoption recorded in this official document from 1976. To be exact, October the 4th, 1976, precisely 12 months after his death. 
It makes you feel so powerless. It's really a breach of state responsibility. The damage the state inflicted on us and so many other Chileans has to be compensated. Hempel is also demanding compensation for himself, and he's not charging to represent the other victims. He's after something far more valuable, justice. I know how hard this battle is going to be, I'm aware of that. It's like David against Goliath. But in the original story, David won, and I have faith. Winfried Hempel and Efrain Feder are on their way to see a notary. It's an important step. Efrain Feder is Hempel's 120th client in his class action suit. Cameras are strictly limited in the notary's office. The attorney and his client are nervous but relieved. Now Efrain has signed the brief like 119 clients before him. Now I can prepare the case over the coming months and file it a few months after that. The guilty parties will be held accountable and the many Chilean and German victims will finally receive justice. They've endured things that should never have happened and I hope nobody else in history will ever have to endure again. Let's get to work. <laughs> Thanks. Let's stay strong. The suit against the Chilean state is due to be filed in November, and the one against Germany next year. Winfried Hembel is determined to see justice done for the victims of Colonia Dignidad.